Hey everybody, so today I have for you the next video of my exclusively pumping series on my channel and today it's going to be all about boosting your milk supply. Before we get into the video, there's just a few things that I want to mention. You guys know that I'm not a medical professional, so if you have any medical concerns or questions, be sure to ask your OBGYN or your local lactation consultant. They can definitely help you. I also wanted to say that most mothers' milk supply is more than sufficient for their baby. You know, you don't need an overabundant supply and this video is really meant for moms who are in a certain situation. like exclusively pumping moms who might struggle with low supply who don't want to supplement anymore or moms who are going back to work and they need a freezer stash before they return. So just try to keep that in mind. Try not to stress over what you're making. For all you nursing moms out there, keep in mind that an overabundant supply is not necessary and actually having too much of an oversupply could damage your nursing relationship. So lastly, before I get into the video, I just want to say what's going to work for one mom is going to work for another. You know, what might decrease your supply isn't going to decrease the next mom's and what may increase your supply might not increase hers. So just try to keep that in mind and without further ado, let's get into this video. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about the most popular things that could boost your milk supply. I'm going to have a Google Doc down below for you guys that I've written up that's going to have all the things that I've researched on boosting supplies. But like I said in this video, I'm just going to mainly stick to the most popular just to kind of keep it short and sweet. So before we do anything, we want to make sure that everything's in working order. That means making sure that you have the correct fitting phalange, which I've gone over a few times, so I'll have previous videos linked down below, and that is in the Google Doc. And then you also want to make sure that your pump doesn't need replacing and that your pump parts don't need replacing. That means making sure that your membranes are good and that there's no cracks in your valves and stuff like that. You also want to make sure that you're emptying completely. This is a huge must when you're pumping and making sure that you're getting all you can out of a pump session. Just make sure that, you know, milk's not flowing while you're stopping and stuff like that. You also want to make sure that you're eating enough calories and staying hydrated. And what I mean by this is you just want to make sure that you're eating enough calories for your daily intake to a lot for breastfeeding and that you don't want to be overhydrated or dehydrated. You just want to stay nice in the middle and nice and balanced. You also want to make sure that you're pumping frequently enough for your week's postpartum. And what I mean is you want to make sure that if you're under 12 weeks postpartum, you're pumping every two to three hours daily and three to four hours nightly. That's going to set you up to make sure that you're establishing a nice, good supply. Lastly, you want to check for things that may be decreasing your supply. And like I said earlier, this isn't going to be so cut and dry. You know, what may decrease my supply isn't going to decrease your guys's. But I definitely know that caffeine was a big hit for me. Once I started ingesting a whole bunch of caffeine, you know, being a sleepless mom, having a whole bunch of coffee, pop, and stuff like that, I definitely noticed a decrease. And when I cut it out of my diet, I've noticed I've had no problems. So definitely be on the lookout for these kind of things. I know people have problems with mint or tight clothes and underwire in your bra. Um, not emptying, like I've said before. Overhydration, dehydration, and then the last thing you really can't do anything about, but your period could actually be causing a decrease, and it's just from the hormones that's released in your body during that time. I know that every now and again when my period comes around, I do experience a decrease in supply, and there's nothing you can really do about that, but just kind of hold out. I know it's kind of irritating, but I've noticed that uh, a few days after it's ended, I get my milk supply back. For the moms who are not yet 12 weeks postpartum, this part in the video is definitely for you. The first 12 weeks is crucial in building your milk supply and it's because of that that it's not normally recommended that these women take um, any kind of supplements or anything like that. You know, you just kind of want to give your body the time it needs to see what it can do on its own and what it's made to do. Like I said before, you want to keep hydrated. Try things like Gatorade or coconut water, Powerade, stuff like that that has electrolytes that will definitely help you keep even more hydrated. You can also try food like legumes and leafy greens, almonds, and old-fashioned oatmeal. Those things have definitely been known to help supply, so you could try those. And then the last thing for those moms who are under 12 weeks postpartum, you may want to try power pumping. I'm going to try to explain power pumping the best way I know how, and basically it's just setting up, having a regular pump session and then staying hooked up and then you're going to want to pump for 10 minutes if the milk is flowing don't turn the pump off just keep going but if you're not having any milk just turn it on and off every 10 minutes and you just want to do this like three or four times power pumping mimics cluster feeding so it may help boost your supply for you mamas who are 12 weeks postpartum or more i'm going to go over the most popular supply boosters excuse me if i'm looking down a lot i'm reading off a list because even though i'm not mentioning everything there's still quite a bit and I want to make sure that I tell you guys everything. You can try the food and drink options that I stated earlier. Those could definitely help in natural ways. So along with those food and drink options, there's also malted drinks, which means like Ovaltine or uh, 
uh, a malt milkshake that's a good excuse to drink a milkshake and then also beer it can actually help your supply too I asked the women on my Facebook group that I'm a part of what their favorite beers were for boosting their supply because I personally don't drink beer but they said Guinness Shock Top and Blue Moon are their favorite so definitely try those out before we get into the supplements I just want to say real quick if you guys have any like pre-existing medical conditions or anything like that be sure to talk to your doctor because I know for some things like fenugreek if you take fenugreek and you have a thyroid issue that could be really dangerous so make sure that you talk to your doctor before you take any supplements I took the supplements for a little while and my OBGYN helped me pick what ones would work best for me so definitely talk to your OBGYN or even your lactation consultant the most popular that I found is fenugreek flaxseed blessed thistle brewer's yeast goat's rue more milk plus and lactation tea <laughs> and lactation teas. I know a lot of women have tried those and they've seen a lot of good results. Before I go into things that have personally helped me, I just want to mention these things that may help that are a little bit different. You can make your own lactation cookies. I've tried this, you know, using some of those supplements or even the natural ingredients. I know one time I made a batch of lactation cookies that had like flaxseed and brewer's yeast and stuff like that in it. And they were actually kind of good and it's kind of a, a good excuse to eat cookies. Like I've said before, power pumping can definitely help. Rest and relaxation can do a ton for your milk supply. I know I still even have problems to this day with if I'm too stressed out, I literally can't even get a letdown out of me. I really have to take a few minutes, I have to relax and calm down, maybe even listen to some music or whatever it may be, and I'll finally get a letdown and I'll finally get the milk flowing. But, you know, I know it's really hard to come by as moms, but just try to you know keep up on your rest and try to stay as relaxed as possible and like I said before all this stuff is kind of like a good excuse you know do it for your milk supply so go get a massage you know do things like that you know treat yourself every once in a while if you have the time pumping about five to ten minutes after you've emptied is a good way to signal that you need even more breast milk hospital grade pumps have been known to um, definitely boost supply I know when I used a hospital grade pump I got a lot more than when I use my little pump and style advance is actually sitting in the background that you probably can't even see but I got a lot more with the Medela Symphony Some of the most recommended hospital grade pumps are like the Spectra s1 and s2 the um, Medela Symphony and the Lactina. And there's a few others that I actually can't think of, but they're in the Google Doc down below for you guys too. Essential oils may help with your milk supplies. And I personally don't know enough about essential oils to talk about them. So if you have any questions about that or if you're interested in trying those, definitely get a hold of your local essential oil rep and I'm sure that they know it could help you. And then lastly is things to do with your baby like skin to skin or photos or recordings. I know when I've been away from my daughter and I look at her photos, I get a lot more letdowns naturally than if I was just sitting there not really doing anything. You know, and like I said, skin to skin can help stimulate milk supply. I do that every once in a while and I seem to notice a boost. And those those things just release the oxytocin which has been known to increase your milk supply and get that stuff flowing so definitely try those things out and then the last thing for a lot of women is medication I know that there's a couple medications out there and you'll need to talk to your OBGYN and get a prescription for those lastly to kind of wrap up the video I just want to mention things that have worked for me I personally haven't seen any results from using supplements or anything like that or even like the food and dietary things that I mentioned but I have noticed a difference with power pumping skin to skin and sticking to pumping every two to three hours it's really tedious and it's not always fun but that's the only kind of things that have really boosted my supply all right so i hope you guys found this video super helpful and as always thanks for watching